Introduction to Interpreting the Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer Plot. Adopting a systematic approach to the Humphrey Visual Field Plot will help with diagnosis and avoid interpretation errors. If you didn't perform the test yourself, it can be helpful to discuss the patient's performance with the perimetrist. Did the patient seem alert throughout or struggle to maintain concentration or head position? Let's first look at the plot. Ensure the patient's details are correct. The date of birth must be correct as it is used to compare the patient's results to the aged matched normal database. Look at the date. What test strategy was used? In this case, CETA standard 24-2 threshold. Which eye are we testing? OD, right eye, or OS, left eye? What refractive correction was used and is this appropriate for this patient looking at the bowl of this instrument for a prolonged period, i.e. at 30 centimetres? A high plus lens could create a rim artefact. Did they use their own reading glasses and are they too small or sit too low on the face? Are the pupils abnormally small and could this affect the result? Now look at the reliability indices, fixation losses, false positives and false negatives. Fixation loss is estimated by presenting a stimulus in the presumed location of the blind spot. The newer models of the Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer have a gaze tracking record. Upstrokes indicate fixation loss at the time a stimulus was presented, and downstrokes indicate a blink or that the eyelid prevented gaze tracking, for example in ptosis. Greater than 20% fixation loss rate may suggest compromised results, but does it concur with the gaze tracking record? Or is this artefactual? For example, the patient's head tilted or the machine couldn't find the blind spot. A high false positive error rate indicates a trigger happy patient. The patient pressed the button when they had not seen a stimulus. The machine estimates this by counting responses made before, during or impossibly soon after a stimulus is presented. Over 15% false positives indicates an unreliable result. The false negative error rate is measured by showing a brighter stimulus at a location where the patient's threshold has already been established to be normal. A high false negative rate can indicate inattention, but be wary that high false negative rates can be expected in pathologically abnormal fields, for example in established glaucoma, even when the patient has been attentive. Let's move on to the numerical and graphical data. The top two plots represent the raw data. The top left plot shows the numerical threshold sensitivity values in decibels at each stimulus location. So that's how bright did the machine have to make each point for it to be seen. This data is presented in grayscale in the top right plot as a more visual representation of this raw data. Do not rely just on the grayscale plot for interpretation. Have a look now at the total deviation plots. The numerical total deviation map shows if and by how many decibels each point differs from that of the aged match normal database. Below this is a total deviation probability map. Here, deviations from normal are highlighted when they are statistically significant, so normal variability is ignored. A light grey square says that at that location, the patient's sensitivity is worse than the bottom 5% of normal subjects of the same age. Or to put it another way, 95% of normal patients of this age would have better sensitivity at this location. Is the patient's hill of vision lower than expected for their age group? A generalised depression on the total deviation plot can indicate cataract, small pupil size, or uncorrected refractive error. Now look at the pattern deviation plots. The pattern deviation plots take into account this patient's total deviation from normal and highlight locations that are locally depressed compared to the patient's overall hill of vision. This makes the pattern deviation plot the most useful part of the visual field printout. If a patient has cataract, their whole hill of vision will be reduced on the total deviation plot but the pattern deviation shows points that are further depressed compared to their own general performance. Again, the same probability representation is used to show statistically abnormal points. The total deviation and pattern deviation should be compared. Do they look the same or are they different? If there are lots of general points shown on the total deviation map, but none on the pattern deviation map, 
there is probably cataract. If there are lots of points on the pattern deviation, but not on the total deviation, the patient was probably trigger happy. Confirm this by looking again at the false positives. If the two plots look about the same, there is no generalised depression. A defect that appears on both is more likely to be genuine. The glaucoma hemifield test, or GHT, compares the pattern deviation of specific parts of the upper field with their mirror image parts of the lower field. It then gives a plain language interpretation of whether this is considered normal or not, such as outside normal limits or borderline. It was not designed to interpret neurological loss, but it is reasonably reliable at detecting glaucomatous loss. VFI, or Visual Field Index, is found on newer machines and is intended to be used as an indicator for comparison over time. Around 100% indicates normality, whereas 0% indicates complete loss of measurable visual field. It uses the total deviation values to calculate a centre-weighted mean deviation and represents central ganglion cell loss. MD, or mean deviation, is a centre-weighted average of the values from the total deviation plot. 0 to minus 2 decibels is normal, whereas minus 30 to minus 35 decibels is severely abnormal. PSD, or pattern standard deviation, reflects localised deviation from the patient's threshold, so it will be zero in a normal visual field and increase, i.e. a positive number, as a defect progresses. However, in complete field loss, it will also be zero. To recap, assess the printout methodically and don't jump to conclusions. Take into account reliability, but think of reliability on a sliding scale rather than reliable versus unreliable. A plot should not be disregarded purely because of false negatives. Don't rely on the grey scale. Look at the pattern deviation probability map and compare it with the total deviation map. Remember, a defect needs to be repeatable to be used for decision making. Get the patient back to repeat it another day, if needs be, and ensure that the perimeterist is well trained and attentive.